Well, hi there. Velociraptor has got to be one of the five most famous non-avian dinosaurs in the world. And I specify non-avian because there is a lineage of dinosaurs alive today. A group of largely flighted, feathered, maniraptoran dinosaurs in the clade Aves, which itself is nested in the clade Aviale. All of the dinosaurs more closely related to birds than they are to the clade Dinonychosauria. Dinonychosauria includes our friend Velociraptor. So while Velociraptor is not a member of the Aviale, it is a member of the clade most closely related to the Aviale. I mean, and look at the half moon shaped bones on the wrist. It's no one of these guys learn how to fly. <laughs> no, seriously. Did you ever notice how all of Dr. Grant's colleagues were laughing at him? Many might suspect that this is because the idea that birds and dinosaurs are closely related was somewhat controversial at the time, and that his colleagues were a bit behind the times. But I suspect it was because his colleagues were ahead of the curve. Because Velociraptor was not the ancestor of birds. In fact, a much stronger case can be made that it was the descendant of feathered flying dinosaurs, not the other way around. And there's some reason to believe that they were not only the descendants of feathered flying dinosaurs, but that they were themselves feathered flying dinosaurs. And as we discussed in our video about the Maniraptora, the dinosaur that they were studying in the Montana Badlands was not Velociraptor at all. But you can watch that video if you want to know more about that. What I want to discuss today is the very real possibility that Velociraptor and many of its closest relatives could fly like a bird. Whenever I see news about rare fossil discoveries, it often feels like something is missing. Sensational headlines and biases make it hard to find the real story, and algorithms further complicate this by spreading unverified information. But I recently came across a solution to this, and I'm excited to introduce you all to Ground News, the sponsor of today's video. Ground News is a fantastic app and website created by a former NASA engineer to help you navigate our complex media landscape. It gathers articles from over 50,000 sources worldwide, providing you with context about each source's biases, reliability, and ownership. It allows you to compare how different outlets cover the same story and see where the truth lies all in one place. Let's check out this story about the recent discovery of a rare teen T-Rex fossil in North Dakota. This story was covered by over 50 news sources. We can visually see on the bias distribution chart that the majority of the coverage comes from the left and center. We can also see the factuality and ownership of the sources, all factors that can influence bias and framing for a story. If I scroll down, I can see every article covering the story and compare headlines. The left frames it as a children's discovery for display, while the right suggests the museum took it away. It's easy to see why we can't rely on a single source. Diverse perspectives are crucial to getting the full picture and understanding all aspects of a story. One of my favorite features of Ground News is the blind spot feed, which shows news stories underreported by one side of the political spectrum. Ground News isn't just about news. It's about developing critical thinking skills and improving media literacy. With the Vantage plan, you get unlimited access to all of these features, helping you see discrepancies in how topics are covered and ensuring you get a balanced perspective. So if you want to enhance your understanding of the world and get a more balanced view of the news, go to ground.news slash Clint. Ground News is doing important work, and I hope you check them out. Now, could Velociraptor fly? All right, where to begin? Perhaps here. This is the last common ancestor of the clade Paravis. The last common ancestor of raptors and velociraptors. And the question about this ancestor is, well, did it fly? Because it's pretty obvious that at least some of its descendants did. The Aviale is full of flying dinosaurs from Archaeopteryx to the American Kestrel. But this guy's flighted descendants were not limited to the Aviale because some of them are also found in the other lineage that came from these ancestors, the lineage that contains Velociraptor, the Deinonychosauria. And not just the Deinonychosauria, which contains things like Troodontids, but within the very family of Velociraptor, the Dromaeosauridae. 
And I want to make a video really digging into this clade. In fact, that was the video I intended to make when I started working on this video. But I ran into this and this was just too cool. So let me know if you want that video about the Dromaeosauridae as part of this coming Dinosaur December. But in short, the Dromaeosaurids, like most of the Maniraptora, were feathered. Unlike in groups like Tyrannosaurus and Carnotaurus, where we have skin impressions showing scaly skin, all fossils of the external features of Dromaeosaurids reveal that they were heavily feathered with feathering resembling that of one of the best known flighted dinosaurs, Archaeopteryx. In fact, the similarities are so great that many have speculated at times that Archaeopteryx belongs in this clade and not the Aviale. Though today it seems pretty clear that Archaeopteryx is indeed an Avialan. Regardless, we have considerable evidence that even large Dromaeosaurids, including Velociraptor, were heavily feathered with large aerodynamic pinaceous feathers on their forearms and tails and feathers all over the body. In addition to being feathered, dromaeosaurids tended to be bipedal, fast-moving carnivores. The word dromaeosaur means swift lizard or perhaps more accurately, running flat out like a lizard drinking lizards. They had large heads with generally narrow jaws and forward-facing eyes long arms and hands that could be folded against the body, and a recurved sickle-shaped claw on their second toe, the innermost toe that touches the ground on each foot. Though we have considerable evidence that it was generally held off of the ground as was depicted in Jurassic Park. The claw of dromaeosaurids was generally more heavily curved than that of other closely related groups like the Troodontids, and was probably used for pinning prey more than for slashing as implicated by Dr. Grant. And it also may have been used for climbing. And this is important because, as we've been discussing, many of them could likely fly. Especially the members of the four-winged clade, Microraptoria. But also members of other claves, such as Rahanavis. Now the thing is that Microraptoria is more closely related to Velociraptor than it is to Rahanavis. And both Rahonavis and Microraptoria are more closely related to Velociraptor than they are to birds. Which means that if the common ancestor of Paravis did not fly, that flight has evolved a minimum of twice and potentially three separate times in that clade alone. And that wouldn't be impossible, but it is probably more likely that flight evolved fewer times than that. It could have evolved only once, sometime before the Paravis diverged into two distinct clades. And if it only happened twice, then it would have happened in the Aviale, and then a separate time in the Dromaeosauridae. Either way, if it happened fewer than three times, then Velociraptor and many other members of the subfamily Velociraptorinae, assuming that they themselves couldn't fly, would have been secondarily flightless. Like a cassowary a flightless descendant of flighted ancestors, the cassowaries of the Cretaceous. So phylogenetically, it seems highly likely that Velociraptor was either flighted itself or the descendant of flighted ancestors. But what do we know from the examination of Velociraptor itself? I'm glad you asked, because if you were looking for evidence that members of the Velociraptorinae could fly, the strongest evidence would probably come from what we have learned from Velociraptor. Because in 2007, researchers discovered something unexpected on the ulna of Velociraptor, the ulna being one of the bones in the forearm. What they found were quill knobs, also known as ulnar papillae. Little raised processes on the bone found today exclusively in birds, and more specifically in many flighted birds where the ligaments that connect flight feathers attach to the bone. And here's the thing, we don't tend to find them in flightless birds. Once they're no longer being used for flight, they tend to disappear pretty quickly. Which to me suggests one of three possible explanations for the quill knobs on Velociraptor. Number one, Velociraptor was secondarily flightless, but its recent ancestors could fly and quill knobs were therefore still present. They'd become flightless so recently that quill knobs hadn't had time to disappear like they have in most flightless birds today. Number two, Velociraptor was secondarily flightless, but unlike most flightless birds today, 
It still possessed long arms and flight feathers that it used for something like balance or perhaps even gliding. Something that still warranted strong attachment of the well-developed flight feathers, though not powered flight. Or, number three, Velociraptor, at least at some point in its life, could fly. Now, Velociraptor was nowhere near as big as the dinosaurs called Velociraptor in Jurassic Park, but they were still perhaps too large to fly, especially given the length of their forelimbs and the relatively small surface area for flight muscles to attach on the breast. So flight, as adults, while still on the table, seems somewhat implausible. But what about when they were smaller? For that, we need to take a look at one of their even larger cousins. My personal favorite dromaeosaurid, and likely yours as well, even if you don't know it by name, Deinonychus. In 2015, Parsons and Parsons published a paper demonstrating that while adult Deinonychuses were too large to fly, and their limbs lacked specific movement capabilities required for flight, the same was not the case for juveniles, and that powered flight may have been entirely possible in juvenile Deinonychuses. And if it was truly present in juveniles of their larger cousins, it would have been possible even longer in juvenile velociraptors, perhaps even in adults. If you can imagine a border collie sized winged dinosaur with murder toes dive bombing you on your way through the aviary at Jurassic Park. So what do you think? Could Velociraptor fly? And if not, what was stopping it? And if you want to find out which dinosaur was actually in Jurassic Park, now would be a good time to watch this video. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. We sometimes try different and new formats for videos like this one, and that can be a little bit scary because, you know, this is what feeds our families. Because of the support of our patrons on Patreon, we can do things like this. Recently, we made a, a video that I'm really excited about talking about some common positions on evolution given by people who are young earth creationists. And it's been a really great video. We've really appreciated the feedback that we've received. We've also recently become the recipient of a Kent Hoven whack as a result of that video. And we have a long discussion of that, as well as many of the fun themes from this video and how to run a business, in our video this week for our patrons on Patreon. And then on top of that, that video, we've had a little bit of an issue with whether or not it can be monetized due to the Tucker Carlson content in it. And so it's thanks to you guys on Patreon that Things like that can happen and we can still potentially feed our families. So thank you. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, making more content like this in the future, uh, please consider checking it out. Wow. All right. Let's talk about Velociraptors, shall yeah, we? we shall. What do you think of this tie? Love it. Dino December. Mm -hmm. Did the fans send that? Yes. That's fun. T-Rexes with, with Santa hats. <laughs> <laughs> Santa <laughs> A group of largely flighted, feathered, manny raptor and dinosaurs in the clade Aves. Actually, let me not say that in Spanish. <laughs> it's Aves in English. <laughs> Paraves. Or it could be Paraves. Can you... Here's the problem. People, people often criticize pronunciations, but it's like... Some of these words I've never heard spoken before. If I have heard them spoken before, it was by a single professor who may or may not have ever heard them spoken before. <laughs> so searching, searching. Terabase. Terabase. Probably not reliable. <laughs> Wish and terms from Judaism. So make sure to stay tuned to the channel if you enjoy learning. Is this English? Parabah. I don't think when I speak, I mean that I should take the pronunciation correctly. Parabah. Okay, Jason tends to leave when the company is done. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, his loyalty is limited to well, only as long as the company exists. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't stick around for the end. <laughs> what, what, why'd you leave? Uh, they didn't have any money left. Wait, they okay, okay. Let me revise my statement. <laughs>
<laughs> Jason will stay only until the money is done. <laughs> he will bleed them dry. <laughs> We started this YouTube channel on like $11 and some shoestrings <laughs> and, and literally some cans of soup. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't ever think it was going to go anywhere and it just happened to us. Yes. <laughs>